It's live. It's kicking off. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Quarantine Coffee or Beer. And we're taking a break from the beautiful weather outside. Uh, is it sunny where you are, dude? Uh, yes, it's a beautiful day. Ah, well, let's, I won't keep you too long because uh, we all got to make the most of this glorious weather. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my guest today, very excited and very grateful he's on the show, is Florian Grootveld. Quite yeah. Quite fair. <laughs> Sorry, I told you. I could. <laughs> um, and uh, do you like being called Flo for sure, or would you prefer Florian? No, Flo is perfect. Flo, awesome, great. First of all, cheers, Flo. Thanks for being on the show, my friend. You're cheers. drinking not beer. What are you drinking? I am uh, drinking the Italian way of beer, uh, white wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally allowed. Quarantine rules. Cheers. Cheers. I've gone with a. A, uh, a piston head flat tire. It's great and it's very well tuned. Nice. Um, Flo, you are the A&R and project manager for Nuclear Blast Records. Yes. That's awesome because there's lots of exciting words in that title. A&R is cool, project manager sounds cool, and Nuclear Blast is just, let's be honest, a very, very exciting and dead cool name for a record label as well. But on top of that, you've made a recent addition to your Bo, um, with a new management company that you've headed up as well called Deadshot, which again, 10 points for awesome, cool word. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that recently, you just announced that publicly uh, last week, it wasn't it? Uh, yes, we uh, just officially launched on the 5th of May. Excellent. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. Is it just you on the team there or how big is, how big is the team? Uh, no, we are two people. Um, it's me and a good friend of mine who I'm friend with since oh, 15 to 20 years. I don't know exactly. Um, and um, he's also working in the music industry for a German um, distributor. Um, and he's working in online marketing. Um, but he's also, he studied guitar and composing and music production. Mm. Um, and yeah, we are doing it together. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm coming from the A&R product management side. He's coming from the uh, music artistic side and also online marketing. So yeah, it's a really cool setup. Awesome, because um, for anyone out there that's a little bit unsure of exactly what A&R people do or even what it means, uh, it means artists and repertoire, right? Yeah, exactly. And that hasn't changed, so it still means that. So what, what is like your day-to-day really like what as, as an A&R manager? Well, as, a, as an A&R, you mostly take care of uh, release schedules of financing for albums and stuff. Um, it sounds uh, much more amazing than the daily work is, basically. Right. <laughs> um, and as a product manager, uh, yeah, you are in control of the whole product. Um, of the budgeting of a new release, um, the timeline of a new release. Um, you're working together with a team, of course, of, of promotion people and uh, distribution people. Of course, the band's management. Mm. Um, and yeah, as a product manager, your, your main job is to have everything under control and have... Um, everybody on the same page right i see so like the head organizer basically yeah for the certain product yes and do you have do you have a, any say or an influence in the sound of a record and the, maybe the look of the the album cover or something like that as well i i have yeah i mean it's different from record label to record label on that i guess mm. um but i really i really like to give artists a lot of freedom because I think they are the artists, they are the creative parts, um, and artworks and music should fit together and it should have the same vision. And when it comes from the artist itself, I guess it's much more authentic and it's, mm. um, yeah, it's, it gives a all around better feeling for the artist, but also for the fans, right. I think. Yes, I totally agree. Do you also play in a band yourself? Uh, no, not anymore. Um, I played drums for 20 years. Cool. 
Um, and I had my school band as a drummer. Also um, cool. <laughs> and after that, um, I was a singer in a cover band um, where we just, yeah, it started off as, as fun. And uh, it was a, <laughs> actually, we were a cover band covering a German comedy band. <laughs> a cover of a comedy very um, good Different. which was which was uh, actually really fun and it was uh, crazy times <laughs> yeah yeah um and after that i yeah i i learned a bit with screaming and growling and all that stuff and um i wrote a few songs together with friends in the in the kind of uh metalcore deathcore uh genre but we never followed it up, basically. Mm. Okay, but what made you want to get into this particular line of work? Uh, well, <laughs> how did it happen? Actually, I I did a lot of stuff in my life, <laughs> um, but basically, as a as a small kid, I dreamed of working in the music business, music industry. Um, but I actually had no clue what it is, what mm. it is about, what you need for it, or how to get in. Do you still feel like that now, or do you, or do you have a much more of a firmer grasp on it now? Yeah, well, I know now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I was a kid, it was uh, really, it was like this big, big dream world I had of the music industry. Um, mm. And... Um, yeah, but basically I had no idea what it is and how to get in. And um, yeah, then I did a lot of different stuff. I uh, had a few jobs and I had, uh, I studied for almost five years. Um, and after that I was unemployed. Um, and yeah. Did you, then study, did you study something outside of yes. arts and music and Right. Yeah, I studied history and politics science. Fun, <laughs> very fun. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of history personally, but uh, politics not I... so much. But <laughs> mm. yeah, but um, yeah, after that, all that, I, I actually uh, just applied for a for a training. Um, wow! And they took me in and. Um, yeah, from there on, I all of a sudden was in the music business. <laughs> Sick, just like that. Just by putting yourself forward and uh, taking a yes. risk, I suppose, just to do it. So yes. let's have a little think about like the way that people might assume record labels work. Now, I think that there's quite a big difference between how they used to work, certainly, you know, 15, maybe 20 years ago. How different is it now? As in... How, what's, a, what's a label's job today? Like, how important are they? Well, I was not at a label 20 years ago. No, um, <laughs> that's true. But of course, the world was much more physical based or it was completely physical based. Yeah. Um, so of course, there was more work for a label to do in ways of manufacturing, distribution, um, wholesaling, retailing, mm. all that stuff. Um, that's still part of the job today. Um, but of course, the digital business also takes a big share now. Yeah, sure. Um, so of course, the job has changed to, to more digital ways, also communication and, and also internal communication, of course, yeah. um, has completely switched. Um, and also communication with fans. Um, because nowadays, as a label, you are also a a visible company and you have your own brand yeah uh, uh, which is completely different to to 20 years ago where I guess of course people were aware of record labels but yeah it was different times back then yeah and um, I love I love that about nuclear blast in particular like having been on the site many times too it's like you've seen it's got a really great sense of itself and it's a very obvious brand and it's cool. And I like the way that it presents all the products and all the artists that you, you have. Like it's, yeah. it's really good. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's completely branded. Um, and it's, uh, I guess it's really important for 
every company nowadays. Mm. It actually it doesn't matter what you do if you're in the music business or movie business or even if you sell whatever cars or you sell wine or you sell whatever you do yeah. um, nowadays for companies it's really important to be visible and to be memorizable is that a word yeah <laughs> it'll do it'll do um, um and have your own branding and have your own identity i guess uh, i i think that's really important nowadays because the world switches from Uh, due to to the online world, we switch from from all these middlemen of wholesalers, retailers, all these mm -hmm. men and all these all these companies in the back. We are switching to completely direct to consumer business. Yes. Um, and if you want to convince a consumer of your business, you have to have an identity and a branding. Yeah, and you have to be, it has to be quite obvious what you stand for in a yeah. general kind of way. Um, yeah, what, exactly. What do you think are some of the, like, the, the things that Nuclear Blast do well and that they do stand for and that you know, is, a, is appealing to people? Well, Nuclear Blast has a long history um, and a long successful history. Um, I guess that also makes it a big thing for a lot of people yeah um also of course the artist roster is absolutely impressive yes it is and it's massive as well <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah of course it is it is much easier to communicate with fans and to to be um to be visible to the to the whole world when you have a impressive artist roster as nuclear blast has yeah um, but of course, also, um, the people working at Nuclear Blast are doing amazing jobs. Um, that's also a part of it. Um, yeah. It's clever decisions um, and uh, hardworking, smart people um, with a lot of passion for everything they do. Mm -hmm. um, and that all comes together in Nuclear Blast. And it's a big company. Um, But still, everybody is passionate about his job. Yeah. And um, I think that that is really showing, basically. Yeah. How many submissions do you get as a company a month? Would you know? How many bands reach out? I, I don't know. Actually, it's so many people working at Nuclear Blast. Um, and I guess everybody gets submissions uh, yeah. in one or the other way. Um, so I guess it's really countless kind of <laughs> do you know what um do you have um a pretty good idea of the kind of things you look for in bands well i can say from my position um and especially in my position which i had for years on long branch hmm. um long branch was is the other record label that you used to work for as well exactly yeah yes yeah. um i always looked for of course the most important is good music Yeah. Um, in the first place, it's about the music. So, of course, um, I have to be hooked by the music. Um, but then there are some other things, of course. Um, it's how bands look. Like, is there a, is there a color theme? Mm -hmm. um, do they have good-looking band pictures? Mm -hmm. um, is there a good logo? Uh, icon or something like that um and uh, also how does your social media look it's really important nowadays like right. how do you how do you sell yourself right so what's the um, band's what's the band's brand like exactly. already across all exactly. the social platforms too their forward yeah. facing image right exactly that's so really important because um that's where you uh win your fans with mm -hmm. um yeah so as a band, if you, if you lack in your social media and your branding, uh, you will most likely not have enough fans to be interesting. Right. It's kind of obvious when you say it, but it's something that's, I don't think it's necessarily easy and it can be kind of overlooked by, I think, a lot of young bands. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, that it is overlooked often um, because um, a lot of artists, I feel, um, miss the understanding for how everything is connected. Right. Um, how how a YouTube video is affecting your Spotify streams, how your Spotify streams are affecting your Instagram and how your photos on Instagram are affecting your look inside the industry. Yeah. And you can, this you is can really switch, interesting. Yeah, what you do you mean exactly? switch all this uh, with each other. Um, basically, yeah, it is all connected to each other. And the whole thing gives the whole picture of your band. And if that picture is looking good and it's sellable, mm. marketable, yep. then you're interesting. So you're saying that, I think I've got this right, that it all, everything has an effect on everything else. It all, it all matters because if you're going to go, if you discover a band for the first time and the first place you see them is on YouTube and views look good and there's lots of nice positive engagement on the video and that's all exciting and people seem to really like the song. Then you go and check them out on another platform, maybe Spotify or maybe Instagram or something like that, for example, and the stats are lower, not as many followers, not as many, not as many engagements per post or something like that. Do those kind of, you're trying to paint a picture, an overall picture. So if little yeah. things are a little bit off, does that sort of raise concern really? Because it shows that, well. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, nowadays, um... Yeah, it's, it's important that, that um, all your numbers and your profiles kind of match. Um, if you have a big mismatch in YouTube and Facebook, Instagram, mm. then it shows that you're putting money or you're focusing on YouTube, but you leave the rest behind, which is not helping your fans. Should a band, if they're limited by budget because of how like, early in their career they are, or what, for whatever reason, do you think they should focus on one platform and make the most of that there if they're limited by budget? Or should they still try to capitalize on all of them? Um, I think it really depends on, on what kind of artist you are. Okay. Um, and especially for, for heavy music, it depends also on what kind of music you play. Um, if you are more in the in the dark gothic area, um, I think YouTube is really important because uh, it comes along with the looks of everything. Um, yeah. If you make if you're playing um, old school hard rock, um, then your platform is most probably more Facebook because. Um, the, the, um, because of the age structure on Facebook. Yeah, the, the older demographic tend to be on Facebook a lot more than some of the other platforms. Exactly. Yeah. Um, if you are a 20-year-old metalcore band, yeah. um, of course, your main focus should be Instagram. Um, and that's like, but I still think that you should care about all of them, but... Yeah, find out which is your main platform for what you are doing. I see. Yeah, great. That makes a lot of sense. Make it appropriate to your kind of music. Exactly. So in terms of like a project management then, like you're overseeing um, a lot going on, but basically you, you also have to see far into the future. You have to kind of know what milestones need to be hit and reached by a certain amount of time and know where you want to take something. But at the end, but... Ultimately, it's always the same kind of campaign because it's always to promote a single EP album or more often album, obviously. So like the end goal is always to sell tickets and sell albums, right? Yeah, of course. Does some of the, does some of the challenges come from having to find new creative endeavors to literally sell and promote? Um, yeah, I... Yeah, of course, you need, a, you need it also there. You need a different approach to different artists. Right. Um, because you cannot sell, let's say, you cannot sell Metallica the same way you sell um, uh, Conjurer. Yeah. Um, 
it's not working. You cannot sell them in the same way. Um, so you also have to know what your band is about as a product manager. Um, but yeah, of course, um, I mean, it's also a big part of the job in the music industry um, to keep up with the progress in online activities. Like mm -hmm. um, it changes a lot um, yeah. because- So quickly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it changes so quickly, like the way to reach fans and where fans are, it changes really fast nowadays, especially for younger artists. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's really important to stay up to date with all that stuff. Um, not, that you, not that you use it for every artist, no. um, but just to know that it is there um, is really important, I think. And it's... Yeah, it, it, it's an important thing to, to know that there is always new apps coming out. Yeah. There is always new softwares, new, new data analytics, new whatever, new social media platforms um, like, I mean, <laughs> TikTok or stuff like that. Um, it, it's important to stay up to date with that so you, you have the chance to give your artists a different approach also that's um yeah tiktok's an interesting one because obviously that that's get, that gets a lot of press and talk these days um but yeah it's a it's a funny one it's like just another one to add to the to the plethora of, of choices and get good at and and yeah. everything else i um i wanted to ask do you as a label do you use paid advertising um on social media uh Yes, I mean it's a it's a part of Facebook and Instagram's algorithms um, that you have to put some money into it. Mm. Um, it's part of the game, basically, um, and it's basically not different than the old times. I mean, um, like twenty years ago, um, you bought print ads yeah. in in the big magazines or even in the small magazines. Yeah. Um, to give your artist exposure or your product exposure. Yeah. Um, and basically it's not very different now. You do the same on Facebook, you do the same on Instagram. Um, you just give your artist or your product exposure and this exposure costs money, but that was never different. No, so yeah, I, again, that's really interesting. I think for, for a lot of people um, who might be coming to this whole thing quite new and just because I think that a lot of a lot of bands a lot of young bands go well if I could just get signed then like lots of my problems would be solved kind of thing <laughs> but uh, at, but there's a lot that a label can do for a band and does do for a band but there's also a lot a band can do for themselves and one of those things is 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 understanding where where band and creativity and business meet yeah and understanding that it is the band is a brand and it is great and wonderful to be creative and make something like music but it's also if you want to do it as a proper career you have to understand it's a business and you have to act as a business within a business structure and part of that all comes down to marketing yeah. and everything so yeah it's it's brand. always i i always see it as building a house um mm. and uh what what labels and all the other industry people promotion um and and all they do is they are giving the final touch to your house. But as an artist, you still have to build the house yourself. Right. We just, we just make it look good. So there's a show in the UK. <laughs> it used to be really popular. I don't know if it still runs. It's called uh, Changing Rooms. <laughs> and it's like, basically, people would have these uh, ha houses and then they'd get a bunch of like celebrity designers in to decorate and revamp the house and basically make it look amazing stylish and brand new and all fancy and stuff and that's hey that's that's that's, that's your job you're like the you're like the label equivalent of changing rooms yeah it kind of is like that like we like not only labels also um promoters also booking agents um, um also the music journalists um we are all working together on your house and make it look nice on the inside, but also to the outside world. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But if you don't have a house, there's nothing we can work with. Yeah. Um, and that's basically, I, I guess that's a very, um, very visual way to, to uh, show what we are doing, basically. Yes, I think that's a really good analogy. And I think um, that, again, it's, uh, we've, we've touched on like the band, first of all, the music has to be great. Songs have to be killer. That's obviously the um, most important thing. Plus, they must look good and present themselves well, like got a, pretty much a sellable image. And then I suppose there ha also has to be a story kind of thing, like, or something that's, that's interesting in, or in curiosity inspiring about a band as well, right? Um, yeah, but actually we live in interesting times. Um, storytelling is definitely a good way to market yourself. Um, if you have a story to tell, mm. it's more likely that people will listen to you. Um, but you can also create stories on your own. Um, you have to be creative for that, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not but easy. you can, you can, you can also, if if you don't have a crazy story behind your band, um, you can create a story around your band. Um, it's, it's, a, it's of course work, um, but um, professional music is work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> exactly, yeah. And if they got like a big, and if they got a, a team behind them like yourselves, that you're gonna have, a, have a, an impact on that and have suggestions and ways of doing it. Yes, of course. So what made you want to, go into management as well? What made you want to create Deadshot? Um, well, the thing with Deadshot is um, that during my time at Long Branch, um, I assigned a few artists that were completely without management or any other support um, because I just loved the music and mm. I felt that there is lots of potential. Um, and then, I was kind of, yeah, just helping them out uh, as, a, as a label service, um, helping them out and managed a few things for them. Mm -hmm. um, and now that I left Long Ranch, um, I had the idea of keep that going with supporting bands in, in some way. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, I'm in contact with all the people and um, yeah, so it was kind of easy to say like, yeah, okay, um, I did it before at Long Branch. I will just continue that, um, but under a different name. Right. Very good. And cool. uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, but the idea to to um, yeah start up my own management, uh, the idea was there since two three years. Mm. Um. And basically, I planned it for like 2023, 2024. Like, that was my idea. Um, but because of the whole corona situation, yeah. um, I was at home and I got creative. And uh, yeah, <laughs> then it happened now. <laughs> Suddenly, there was all this time. And uh, why not capitalize on that time? Exactly. That's sick. I mean, yeah, I think that's such a great idea and it's um, brilliant that it's kind of happening now and come to fruition, I would say. It. But um, I guess like that is, it makes sense because a manager is there to be the leader almost. Like I think bands, some bands, they need management so bad because they are just a big gaggle of crazy, crazy fuckers who just can't make a decision to save their lives and like they'll like pull each other's throats out before they ever, ever agree on something so in steps in steps yes. flow to come and like take the reins and having a very like sort of um organized mind and, and able to think about things bigger picture kind of things like that that's yeah. a great skill to have but do you also do well with delegation and, and management as, as with people has that always been quite natural for you um uh, whew. Good question. Um, it's really like, um, I, I think I can communicate pretty well with people. Um, and I can also um, explain my ideas pretty good. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I can also be um, <laughs> very leading, um, um, sometimes to the worst, actually. Um, but uh, I, I. I am a very compromising person. Like I, I really like to find compromises and, and have everybody on the same page mm -hmm. um, because that's really important. Yeah. Um, but as you say, some bands need a strong opinion sometimes. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I do that sometimes as well. <laughs> what is one of the biggest um, challenges for a manager? I think one of the biggest challenges is to earn the trust um, because as a manager, you, you have to be like, like a band member mm. um, because you're involved in almost everything. Um, mm. It's really important that the bands trust you um, and that you also trust the bands, of course. Um, okay. yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's really important to uh, not forget about your, your personal relationships with each member um, because you are, of course, thinking of exposure. You're thinking of how to sell them. You're thinking of, uh, yeah, who can I reach out to? How can I make them bigger? How can I raise the numbers? How can I do that? that? And it's easy to get lost um, in this business thinking. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's really important to earn the trust and to have a good relation with the artist on a personal and private level. Yeah. Um, I think that's for a management some, something that is kind of the hardest part to do. Um, but it's also a fun part actually because you become good friends with amazing people. Yeah, and that's like a, a, that's like a, a positive byproduct of the process is by yeah. trusting someone else and learning to, to trust and figure out how to work with them. You you do just happen to make friends with them as well by by default. Yeah. Uh, we've had yeah. a few managers on the show now, and yeah. uh, and, and something that's come up a, a couple of times is that um, there's a certain amount of like managing expectations is something that comes up quite a lot where. Um, I guess it comes from, you know, obviously a place of like extreme ambition where bands like, well, they expect, well, once we get a manager or once we get a booking agent and once we get a label, you know, we, we must expect more of everything else because that's an instant green light to make these doors open for us. And that's, sometimes that's not always the case, right? So managing the expectation is also something that comes into play there. Is that... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's it's really important that artists, bands understand that just because you have a booking agent, just because you have a management, just because you have a label, uh, it doesn't mean you stop working. It's basically the point where you start working really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna create a little soundbite out of that. That's fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> like everyone's like, as soon as we get those things, basically we'll just go on holiday and just kick back making the music. And it's like. <laughs> No, now you double down your efforts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Exactly. But why is that? Why is that? Why, why do the bands need to double down their efforts? Because with the professional take on it that a booking agent, a label, a management brings in, um, the expectation on you as an artist are also growing. Mm. Um, because um, when you make the step from, from, a, from a small-sized cool band to this step of working with industry professionals, um, it's a bit different. <laughs> um, to, put it, to put it politely, I think. Yeah, because <laughs> it, is, it is different work. And also people expect something from you, of course. I mean, a booking agent expects uh, some things from you, a label expects other things from you, and the management expects also other things from you. Would you, um, would you mind just quickly elaborating on what a label expects of a band and what you expect as a manager? Those are really interesting. Well, a label, of course, as a label, you expect your band to be uh, reliable. That's really important. Um, Deliver, have, deliver demos by a certain date, turn up to the shows when you're 
exposed yeah. to that kind of stuff. Yeah, really important. Like show up to interviews, uh, mm -hmm. um, deliver things on your deadlines, um, because record labels are are a are a big machine running. Yeah. Um, and um, you have to like it, it's really important that you understand as a as a band artist also as a manager for these band artists um, that labels have work on really strict plans right um, and every time you miss your deadline it mm. causes chaos <laughs> yeah um, so that's kind of what a label expects from you and of course that you keep your quality of music or you even get better in what you do yeah. um, and you follow up your 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 identity your brand you, you are creative yeah um, as a management i expect my bands to be passionate um to be hard working um and also to understand that um, me as a manager, but also all the other people in the industry want to help them. Mm. Um, there mm. is nobody, nobody in the whole industry who wishes anything bad for you. I love that point, man. I think if we were, if we were face to face, I'd chink that point. Because, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers to that. Uh, because it doesn't help them. It doesn't help you if the band is taking a step backwards if, if they're getting worse or they're getting shit no one's out for them to fail because everyone needs them to succeed for for, for everyone to, to rise so i mean yeah that's yeah. a really great point and, and you hear that a lot in other fields like uh, acting or um uh, publishing or something like that where you know you walk into an audition to try and like audition for a role and the actor is like nervous because they're in front of a bunch of strangers and they have to perform and they have to do all these things and it's normal to feel kind of nervous about that but, um, and they can, they can appear quite hostile, but actually the people on the other side, the casting directors and the director is like willing that person to succeed because they just want to find their thing. They want to find yeah. their perfect, perfect person and move on with their project. All the time it takes to go through everything is, is not what anyone wants. And that's such a great point. Um, it's not come up before, but it makes sense. Like you want the best from your bands because it makes things move forward. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I can definitely say everybody I've ever met in this whole industry only wants the best for all bands um, because yeah. that's what we are working with. That's what we are working for. Um, that's what people earn money with. Mm -hmm. So um, of course you, you want the best for everybody. And, and if there is no new bands coming up, if there is no successful bands, if there is no big, great bands, yeah. Um, selling a lot of products, selling a lot of tickets, all that. Um, it's not working. Um, it all has to work together. And part of the job is also that we always want um, artists to succeed, yeah. no matter on which level they are. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Money's another one that I like to bring up on the show sometimes too, because um, it's obviously very important. And sometimes I think that it's easy to think that maybe there isn't much money in the music industry or, or things like that. But overall, there is. And presumably there's, there's enough because it's a company like Nuclear Blast is a big company, like you said, with lots of, lots of staff in it. So clearly the business of music still makes money, right? And there's a way of people in bands and managers still making a living from it. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, of course. Um, when you only sell physical products, like in the old days, Mm. Um, and you have a uh, like your revenue is much higher because um, your your margins are bigger. Yeah. Um, of course, the digital world changed that, um, but there is not there is not less money in the business. Um, right. It's just differently shared. <laughs> Um, which is also a good thing because young bands nowadays have much more chances to, to show themselves, to get out. Um, big bands, like the really big artists in the world, 
they still make good money. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they also make good money from streaming. Um, so basically, um, I always see the whole internet thing like with streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, um, and the social media behind it. Yeah. Um, I always see it as a kind of a process like, um, yeah, it has brought democracy to the music industry. Right. Um, the fan really decides. Yeah. Um, like 20, 30 years back, um, actually labels um, decided or music magazines yeah. decided. Um, and people gatekeepers. Total gatekeepers. And um, they just told people what to listen to. Um, and it's, yeah, nowadays it's a, it's a democracy because everybody has the chance to get out, do the job right, and get fans. Mm -hmm. And fans have the chance to listen to everything they want. Yeah. Spoil um, for choice. Yeah. <laughs> Spoil for choice. Yeah, but it's amazing. And, and actually, I, I think there has never been more chances for everybody than nowadays. Yeah, definitely. It's given everyone a bit of an even playing field, so to speak. Yeah. So um, just to wrap things up then, what are, some of the, what are some of the things that you're excited about going into the future? I mean, obviously, right now we're in a very weird period of time, but let's just pretend that uh, for the sake of this, <laughs> that, you know, we're moving past that now. Uh, you've obviously got Deadshot, which is awesome, and you, in your in your embedded properly uh, Nuclear Blast Two, which is going great. So, what do you what are you looking forward to coming up, and what are some of the things that you're maybe um, also uh, interested, like facing challenges with too? Well, if first of all, first of all, I'm really looking forward to club shows and festivals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amen, amen. <laughs> They're going to be some of the busiest ones yet, aren't they? That's, that's really the first one uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to because I really miss it. Um, yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, like industry-wise, what am I looking forward to? Um, I am really looking forward to see how it all will all develop um, because I think it would also be a wrong assumption right now to think like, ah, oh, okay, this is the business now and it will stay like this. Mm. Um, it will most likely not. Um, and in five years, it's maybe different again. Um, so yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future and I'm looking forward to step, like, step up my game all the time to be a part of it. Right. Um, because for me, actually, that's a fun thing. I love new stuff. I, lo I love new things. I love to work myself into new stuff. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, to see where it's all developing. Do you think the music industry is one of the slowest to adapt to change? I think the music industry was very lazy in a certain part of time mm. um, because it was very successful for like 30, 40 years in a row. Um, and where it was like only going up. Um, and then the big crash came with the internet. Yeah. And I think a lot of people were not prepared for that because they were getting lazy. Um, yeah. But I think that's like 20 years ago now. And I think most people in the industry understood that there was more behind their job than just doing it like this. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, for the future, I mean, it, it's hard to say because, as I said, digital development goes so fast. Yeah. Um, and you actually don't know which app is coming out tomorrow, which will maybe change the world. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's hard to, to say where it's going. Um, but I think we can say for sure that physical sales will drop um, to uh, be in a completely fan item mm -hmm. um, that like, you buy. Like the, way that, uh, like the way that vinyls kind of are right now. 
Yes. Um, they've, they've had a resurgence, but that's really because fans want them to collect. They're not, yes. like the, yeah. Yeah, I think physical items like like CDs and, and vinyl, um, yeah, they will be collector's items. Um, you buy at shows to have them signed or something. Mm. Um, but yeah, nobody will, will buy a CD like it was. Um, yeah. That will not, not be the case in the future. Um, I think where it develops is also the merch is getting more and more important. Um, That's like a big, that is a huge revenue stream for bands and labels, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and merch is, yeah, it's, it's still growing. Um, and I think it's really important that, that you understand that direct to customer will be more and more important in the future because physical sales will drop streaming and yeah, mostly streaming is taken over everything. Mm -hmm. um, which means if you have real fans, they want to have something from you. And if it's not a CD or a vinyl, then they want some merch. Yeah. But you have to give them the chance to buy that merch. So yeah. you have to have a website, an online shop, or a partner where you sell it. Yes. Um, yes. And I think that's, that will be in the future. It's, it's about yeah, knowing, knowing where your fans are, selling them the right product. And I mean, nowadays, you don't even have to produce a thousand t-shirts and find out, oh, nobody wants them. They are shit. <laughs> um, nowadays, you have the chance to ask your fans before about yeah. the merch designs Yeah. and let them choose. Yeah, let them choose. Let them tell you what they like and even do print on demand and not buy the inventory necessarily. Absolutely. Absolutely. Print on demand is also another thing. It, it will also get much, much more important in the future mm -hmm. to, be, to be completely flexible with your fans. Um, and I think basically that will be the next two, three years. That's where it will develop to. Um, but what comes after that who knows? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you, it's such a, yeah, it's crazy when you think about it. Oh, I don't know. I think um, what I like to do and what I'm going to start doing as well is having guests back on like maybe six months to a year later to, yeah. uh, to talk about. I know we won't be that far in the future, but at least we'll be somewhere else. And uh, I'd love to have you back on to talk some more about where, you, where you're at in that period of time too. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ave, thank you so much for coming on doing the show uh, today, man. It's been lovely to speak with you. Yeah, thank you for chatting with you. And see you, <laughs> see you, see you next time. See, you. Thanks, see you next time, everybody. And uh, take it easy out there. Enjoy.